When people think of famous civil engineers in the past, they think of Isambard Kingdom Brunel and Joseph Bazalgette, great engineers of the Victorian era who saved London from cholera by building new sewers. Today, civil engineering is often associated with the most amazing buildings in the world, such as the Sydney Opera House, the Shard, and China's Zhaozhou Bay Bridge, but civil engineering also involves maintaining and adjusting the infrastructure that people rely on every day, roads, railways and bridges, energy and water supply, waste networks, and flood protection. Civil engineers must keep this infrastructure operating effectively and adapt it to challenges such as population growth, climate change, and natural disasters, they must also find ways to provide the infrastructure they need when they don't have the money to pay for it. In short, civil engineers must propose solutions to complex problems and implement them, they really shape the world in which people live. There are two types of civil engineering roles, consultants who focus on design work and usually spend more time in the office or working with clients and contractors who focus more on physical construction and are usually on site, both a challenging environment, all civil engineers must be innovative and logical people, other basic attributes that civil engineers need include, creativity, versatility, problem-solving thinking, and the ability to understand the big picture and collaborate with many other professionals. The structural design process is simple in concept and complex in details. It involves analysis of the proposed structure to show its resistance or strength will meet or exceed reasonable expectations. This expectation is usually expressed as consists of a specified load or demand and an acceptable margin of safety. The performance goals of the structure, the performance goals of structural design are multifaceted. First of all, the structure must perform its intended function safely during its lifetime. Security is discussed later in this chapter. The concept of service life means considering durability and establish a basis for considering cumulative exposure time different risks given that performance and cost are inseparable. Maintain a proper balance between two competitors' performance and cost considerations are the discipline that guides, art, determine the value in architectural design and construction. Value is judged by, eyes, bystander, however, the value one can accept may not be another acceptable. For this reason, political process factors have affected development the lowest target for architectural design and structural performance, with the smallest value decisions embodied in building codes and engineering standards are adopted as legal. Design specifications and standards applicable to engineering and prescriptive lightweight frames the residential design is developed through an open consensus format. Proposed changes, provide public opinion and discussion period, and then vote by qualified voters was taken. In light of the previous discussion, Structural designers seem to have almost know the basic goal of control structure design, in addition to compliance or exceed the minimum limits stipulated by law, although this statement, in general, is indeed, designers can still optimize the design in other ways, and need more effective analysis techniques, creative design details and use innovative building materials and methods. Albeit the harmony among cost and well-being is, obviously, vital for numerous kinds of development, including one- and two-family residences, underlying architects can convey to the proprietor that items and development subtleties are accessible that can further develop building execution, and those alternatives ought to be considered past the base plan legally necessary. One such model would be to add tropical storm cuts between the twofold top plate of the light outline divider and the rooftop bracket or joist, despite the fact that the clasps may not be needed by the construction law. The additional breeze obstruction would help guarantee vertical burden way congruity during solid, straight line winds and, possibly, little cyclones, as well as investigating substitute methods and techniques, for example, PVD in the plan of a private wood outline structure, a design plan determined for explicit structure setup can be more savvy than customary. In outline, 
The objectives of foundational layout are for the most part characterized by law and mirror the aggregate translation of overall population government assistance by those gatherings included in the turn of events and nearby reception of building regulations. A creator's job is to meet the objectives of foundational layout as productively as could be expected and to fulfill a customer's targets inside the aim of the construction law. The architect should bring to bear the fullest degree of their capacities, including imagination, information, experience, judgment, morals, and correspondence, parts of plan that are inside the control of the individual architect and basic to a complete way to deal with plan. According to researchers from the Overseas Development Institute, the lack of infrastructure in many developing countries, is one of the biggest constraints on economic growth and achieving the Millennium Development Goals. Infrastructure investment and maintenance can be very expensive, especially in areas such as inland, rural, and sparsely populated countries in Africa. Some people believe that between 1990 and 2005, infrastructure investment contributed to more than half of the improvement in Africa's growth performance, and that increased investment is necessary to maintain growth and solve poverty, the return on infrastructure investment is very impressive. The average return on telecommunications investment is 30 minus 40%, the return on power generation investment exceeds 40%, and the average return on road investment is 80%. Regional difference consumers and companies demand much more infrastructure than investment, there are severe constraints on the supply side of infrastructure construction in Asia. The infrastructure financing gap between investment and demand $228 billion in the Asia-Pacific region is approximately $180 billion per year. In Latin America, 3% of GDP approximately $71 billion needs to be invested in infrastructure to meet demand, but in 2005, for example, only about 2% of investment left a financing gap of approximately $24 billion. In Africa, in order to achieve the 7% annual growth rate required to achieve the Millennium Development Goals in 2015, infrastructure investment needs to account for about 15% of GDP, or approximately $93 billion per year. In fragile countries, it needs to exceed 37% of GDP. The sources of financing in different sectors vary greatly. Some sectors are dominated by government spending, others are dominated by overseas development assistance ODA, and some are dominated by private investors. In California, infrastructure financing districts are established by local governments to increase property taxes, to pay for physical facilities and services in specific areas, in order to promote private sector investment in infrastructure markets, in developing countries, risks need to be designed given the higher market risks, the allocation mechanism is more cautious. The government spends less money than before. From the 1930s to 2019, U.S. infrastructure spending rose from 4.2% of GDP to 2.5% of GDP. These shortfalls have accumulated. In fact, according to the 2017 ASCE Infrastructure Report card, the investment from 2016 to 2025 was less than $2 trillion. The United States tied for second place, with an average rate of 2.4%. This means that the government spends less money on repairing the old infrastructure and or the entire infrastructure. In sub-Saharan Africa, total government spending is $24.9 billion, of which approximately $9.4 billion. In terms of irrigation, the government represents almost all expenditures. In the transportation and energy sectors, most of the investment is government spending. In terms of ICT and water supply and sanitation, the private sector accounts for the majority of capital expenditures. In general, aid between them, private sector and non-OECD financiers exceeds government spending. Private sector expenditure alone is equivalent to national capital expenditure, 
although most of it is concentrated on ICT infrastructure investment.